Hello everyone, my name is Augustine and I'm an engineer on the other team and I will be talking to you about SSR or server side rendering. So we'll uh, look at an overview of lit SSR as well as uh, what's new we've been working on as well as the project's current status. Let's start with a little bit of an overview. So uh, why would we want to care about server side rendering? So one reason would be for performance and robustness. Uh, we can render static HTML without waiting for JavaScript to load, uh, improving some performance metrics. And uh, we can also do it for search engine optimization and web crawlers. Uh, while the Googlebot does actually support JavaScript, if you didn't know, uh, not all web crawlers might do. So it's good to have. And uh, also for project requirements, uh, customers for components built with lit may have strict SSR requirements. We've actually been hearing a lot from the community that uh, they wish to build a design system with lit, but have strict SSR requirements from downstream consumers within their organization. Um, so for these reasons, SSR is uh, definitely on the top of our minds. Uh, let's take a look at some highlights for the labs SSR package. So firstly, um, it allows server rendering of lit elements and templates to static HTML markup. Uh, we do actually consider this a low level library such that the uh, API provided are intended to be used in creating higher level integrations. Not to say that you can't use them directly, uh, as you'll see in a little bit, we'll give a little demo, uh, but we do anticipate most users to be taking advantage of other framework integrations. And uh, it also works by using the declarative shadow DOM, which is a new browser feature that allows shadow roots to be attached during HTML parsing uh, without use of any JavaScript. Uh, a little caveat on there, um, as for the browser support, uh, it is currently shipping in Chrome and Edge. Uh, it is prototyped in Safari very recently, which is exciting to see. Uh, not yet implemented in Firefox, uh, but there does exist a very lightweight polyfill, which can be inlined. Uh, so that will require JavaScript to be enabled. Uh, but we're excited to see the declarative shadow DOM work in all major browsers soon. So let's take a look at how it actually works. So uh, let's say here we have a uh, lit template here with um, a custom element inside of it. Now, if we pass this into the render function from the lit, uh, labs SSR package, it produces this HTML markup with uh, the declarative shadow DOM. Uh, this part here, the template element with the attribute shadow root is actually the declarative shadow DOM part. This part is built by the render from SSR based on the component definition. So you'll notice this part is not in the markup on the left, uh, but this comes from the render method of the component definition, which let SSR picks up and then uh, spits it out here within the template shadow root. So the next step would be to take this and we pass it on to the browser. So the browser, uh, as it's parsing this particular HTML, it can then go ahead and generate this element tree uh, rendered in the browser. Um, you'll notice that uh, even the, um, the H1 element in the light DOM is properly projected into the slot. All of this, again, without JavaScript for browsers that have this implemented. So the next step here, um, optionally, uh, if your component has some interactive bits uh, and needs to be hydrated, uh, what we can do is go ahead and uh, bring in the lit experimental hydrate support, as well as the component definition here, uh, which is a simple reader here. Uh, you can do this in any ways. Here, I've chosen to add a script tag uh, that brings us in uh, along with the page. You can also do it in other ways where uh, perhaps on a mouse enter, dynamically import uh, these. So the lit experimental hydrate support patches our lit element so that when the component definitions are loaded as the components upgrade, they will uh, actually hydrate uh, the component rather than trying to re-render them from scratch. Uh, so by doing this, uh, any parts that have interactivity, uh, like this button here, we can have an event listener registered, just like that. So we uh, took a look at this sort of a high level view of how it works. Let's uh, dig, it, dig into a little bit of code. Uh, so let's say we have a COA server here and we're writing a handler for the slash route and we're setting the response body as a readable stream. And uh, let's assume we have some header and footer content for the page that uh, we want to include that doesn't involve any custom elements yet. 
the uh, middle part, the content will require litssr though. So first we'll go ahead and import render from litssr. And then we're gonna uh, spread the result of the call here in the middle. We're providing it some template uh, with a data object here. Here I've hard coded it with the name friend. Uh, you can imagine, uh, you can even pull this data from the request context or such. The uh, get template function looks like this, where um, we're taking the data object and returning out a lit template here with the simple greeter, uh, giving it the name attribute from the data provided. So this, as we've seen earlier, um, the render function will go ahead and turn that into a uh, HTML markup with a declare of shadow DOM. And this uh, will be embedded as part of the response body from the server. And the browser can go ahead and parse all of this uh, for the initial render of the page. So let's take a look at what's new uh, that we've been working on recently. Um, so some things that we want to cover here, uh, we'll talk about the SSR docs on our lit.dev site, as well as the 11D plugin package as, and the testing package. Um, so for the docs, uh, uh, we have a new server rendering section in our lit.dev page. Please check it out. We have um, some good uh, documentation on server usage, as well as client usage, uh, including different hydration methods, um, as well as tips for authoring components that are SSR ready, including what life cycles are called on during server rendering and such. Um, so please do check this out and we will keep these updated as we make changes to the SSR package. Uh, we also have a brand new Alumni plugin for lit. It's very exciting. So, um, the uh, 11 plugin lit package is a plugin for the static site generator 11 t And uh, it actually lets you server render lit components during build time generation of static assets. So let's take a look at how uh, this can work. First, you want to go ahead and install the package. And uh, we'll configure it in our 11 e config, where um, you can provide the component modules that should be loaded for server rendering. Uh, once this is configured in 11 t uh, let's say we're building a page with some markup file. Here I have an index page uh, where I have a couple of custom uh, element tags embedded here with the QR code SVG components. And um, since I've provided the component definitions here in the config, once we go ahead and run the mpx 11 t build command, uh, it'll go ahead and generate this HTML with the custom elements uh, all rendered out here in static HTML. And when this loaded in the browser, we have a page with all the things. All right. Um, another thing is the uh, testing package uh, in the labs. So um, this package includes testing utilities to easily check whether your components are SSR or server-side rendering compatible. And uh, you can write tests against uh, for elements uh, rendered in the client as well as the server with the same assertions. So um, uh, it uses a plugin for web test runner for the server rendering portion of it. And let's take a look at what this looks like. So here, let's say we have a test um, that doesn't use our package yet. Um, it does utilize the fixture and insert from the OpenWC testing package, which is excellent. Um, so this right now, as it is, will only run in the browser and you can only test uh, client rendering of this particular element. Uh, by using the labs testing package, we can go ahead and test it in multiple environments. So we're going to bring in the CSR fixture for client-side rendering, as well as the SSR fixture for server-side rendering. And we're going to go ahead and run this in a loop. So for this syntax right here, we're going to take both of these fixtures, alias it into the uh, just a generic fixture for ease of um, reuse. And then for each of these fixture functions we're providing, we're going to run the entire test suite uh, on those. So that way, uh, we can go ahead and reuse all of our um, assertions for both rendering methods. Uh, one slight difference for our fixture is that you do require, uh, we do require that you provide a list of modules, since we need to know what modules to load during server rendering that contains the component definitions. Um, so with this, if your component has something where it's not server renderable, for instance, uh, you're trying to add an event listener somewhere uh, in the lifecycle that runs on the server, this will easily catch it. 
and you can go ahead and address, fix it, and now your components are server-side compatible. Another cool thing we've added is a is server environment checker. So uh, this is now part of um, the lit package, uh, as well as HTML, you can directly um, import it from lit. And it is a const value, which will be true or false, depending on the environment that this is being imported in. And uh, because this is a const, static analysis tools can be used to actually eliminate dead code from client bundles. So if you need to do some work in the server, but not in the client, uh, using this, uh, you will not have to add additional code shipping to the client. A uh, quick demo of this. Um, so for instance, um, we import the uh, is server from lit, and then you can go ahead and use it in some condition check where, uh, for instance, um, this code as it is will break on the server because uh, add event listener is not a uh, not defined for this element in the server, um, but this code can escape that. All right. Uh, some other things we want to highlight are community integrations. Um, early adopters of lit, our lit SSR package, uh, both Astro and Rocket have um, added integrations uh, for using lit SSR uh, within these frameworks that you should definitely check out. And we're excited to see community efforts uh, around using lit SSR. All right, so for a um, bit of a status update on the package, um, we'll, we say that um, put it in the not actually, uh, not close to GA yet, uh, but we do need to work on some more bugs and features. Uh, particularly the SSR approach is actively being worked on and may have potential breaking changes such as uh, the how the API looks as well as what life cycles are called on the server, uh, which is why we're uh, not uh, saying that this is close to GA yet. Uh, some known issues and outstanding features that we do want to work on uh, is uh, definitely hydrate uh, handling uh, asynchronous rendering during uh, server renders. Currently, everything is synchronously rendered, so uh, we can't render anything with promises or such. Um, we do also want to support uh, events and protocols such as context. And we also uh, want to work on integrations with other frameworks such as Next and Next and Angular Universal. Um, Next is currently being worked on by the team. We also have great community effort uh, ongoing for Next integration. So we're excited to see those come to fruition. And uh, we're looking for feedback on um, API agronomics as well as any missing features or if you have incompatible components that you've seen or any other use cases of SSR that you're not seeing covered, please let us know. Um, you can file issues, uh, write in discussions, join our Discord channel to discuss, and all of that. So with that, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.